so much to be thankful for. True words were never spoken. <laughs> Speaking of words, I'm a person who likes to play on words. I like to arrange words in different ways to prick the mind in different kinds of ways to stimulate myself and, and those who I speak with to kind of think in ways that are a little different than what we're accustomed to or the norm. And so one day about four years ago, no, 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 maybe it was about six, I was asked to do affirmations and it was the Sunday before Thanksgiving. And as I was reflecting on being thankful and gratitude, and I start thinking about the idea of living in a way that expresses gratitude, living in a way to where a person can always be in gratitude. So I began to understand that giving thanks is one thing, Yet living thanks is something else. And then the phrase thanks living came to me. Now I'm not claiming to be the first person to ever think of this, but it did come to me and I didn't read it from anywhere. And so ever since it came to me, I've been kind of using this phrase ever since, particularly around Thanksgiving time, but just in general, thanks living, thanks living. We all know what Thanksgiving is. It's that holiday where it's going to come up and we're going to stuff ourselves with sweet potato pie and, and all the fixings and the, you know, those of us who are not vegetarians, we're going to eat the bird or whatever. <laughs> so we're going to stuff ourselves and hopefully throughout the process of that, we at least take some time to be grateful for all the blessings that are very plentiful and bountiful in our lives. That being said, I am an individual that is a big, big advocate of gratitude. I love gratitude. Gratitude is very big in my spiritual practice. It's very big in my life. I, I regularly and intentionally take time to look at things through a lens of appreciating and acknowledging the good in my life. So when it came to doing this lesson, it just kind of, I'm almost winging it today because gratitude is something that is very crucial in my life and I can't do without having a sense of being grateful for all those things, large and small, in my life. Now, I told you all how that phrase, thanks living, came to me. It came to me as a result of reflecting on one of my favorite quotes, actually meditating on it. And it was from the great 15th century mystic, Meister Eckhart. This is a very common uh, quote for those of us who are into quotes. If the only thing, if the only prayer that you ever say in your entire life is thank you, it will be enough. If the only prayer you ever said in your entire life is thank you, it will be enough. Now I find that personally to be a very powerful quote. And I have found through the experience of living that it is indeed true. Gratitude is its own spiritual practice. And I believe that so strongly that I'll go out on a limb here and I will say that no spiritual practice is complete without regular periods of pause to reflect on those things in our lives that bless us, that nurture us, and that flower us. I was doing some research because there is a lot of research on gratitude and the beneficial effects of, of it. It's not only something that mystics over the years and over the ages have come to understand. There are scientific studies that talk about and highlight some of the benefits of gratitude. And I'm gonna, 
I'm going to read here just some of them that I've came across. Grateful people tend to be healthier. Because when people are grateful for their lives and grateful for their bodies, what you are grateful for, you tend to value more. And when you value something, you have a natural proclivity to take care of that which you value. If you value your life, and you value life in general, and you value your body, you will tend to engage in actions to where you will take care of yourself better. So grateful people tend to be healthful, healthier, both physically and psychologically. Grateful people tend to show higher levels of empathy and lower levels of aggressive behavior. Because when I am grateful, that gratitude tends to extend to other people, for other people. And it tends to have a very compassionate, empathizing effect. Gratitude, believe it or not, has been found in many people to improve sleeping. There have been studies done that when people take 15 minutes to write down a list of things that they are grateful for just before retiring for the evening, they have a, they have a more restful, rejuvenating sleep. So the next time you're up and you can't fall asleep because you're worried about stuff, break out the pen and paper and write down a few things that you're grateful for and see if that makes a difference. Gratitude improves self-esteem. When you're grateful, you feel better about yourself. When you're, grateful, when you're grateful, you tend to recognize more the good things that are in your life. And so it makes you feel good about yourself. It aids in healing stress and trauma because it has a very healing effect on the mind and the heart as well as the spirit. And it improves and grows relationships. It has been scientifically shown that simply saying to someone, thank you, and coming from a genuine place when doing so, it tends to have the effect on the person you're thanking to have more an affinity towards you. That facilitates and shoots a shot of adrenaline in any and all relationships. When you truly are grateful for people in your life and you find ways to express that gratitude. And this is just some of what I found. I could go on to the end of service, but there's not enough time for that. But as you reflect on those things and all those benefits of gratitude, you might wonder, why does that work? How does that work? How is it that a consciousness of gratitude, an attitude of gratitude, if you will, has all those beneficial effects? Well, there's a reason for that. Gratitude is a state of consciousness that is very whole and very fulfilling. And there's few things other than gratitude that tunes you in to the source of your being, whether you recognize that source or not. If you see that source of your being as God, or if you have a problem with the G-O-D word, if you see yourself as being from pure love, or truth, or life, or from beauty, or universal abundance, all of that works. Whether you consciously connect with that source or not, the mindset and the consciousness of gratitude puts you in line, in alignment with that source. And when you are in alignment with the source of your being, that source that birthed you, that source that conceived of you, that source that lives in, through, and as you, moves and flows through you to bless your life. Any and all things that you have that blesses your life comes from that source, whether you recognize it or not. And I think the scripture in 1 Corinthians captures it beautifully. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 Verses 57. 
But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God who gives us our victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now let's engage in a little bit of metaphysical Bible interpretation. Anytime you see the word Lord in the New Testament refers to the Christ. We in unity understand that Jesus is the great example of this Christ nature, this Christ consciousness. Believe it or not, and it may be a revelation to some, Christ is not Jesus' last name. <laughs> he didn't come from the Christ family of Mr. and Mrs. Christ. Christ is a spiritual capacity that Jesus discovered in himself. And once he discovered this capacity in himself, he embodied it fully to where there were no hard dividing lines between his personality and character and the divine spark that is in him. And this is why the book of John has all these affirmations. I am the breath of life. I am the vine, I am the truth, the life, and the way. He's speaking in first person, I am, claiming that God power that is within him. Now, most people interpret that to mean that that is only singularly exclusive to Jesus. Newsflash for you. Just the way Jesus could verbalize the words, I am, you can say them too. The reason why you can say them, because that same divine spark that Jesus discovered within him is also in you. As I often say, why should Jesus have all the fun? <laughs> you can get in and on it too. That divine spark is in you. And through that Christ nature within you, you have the power to be victorious. And through that Christ nature that is in you, it brings you all the good, all the blessings that you experience in your life. All the God that you will ever need for your life is in your life and in you right here and right now. You are the Christ. You are that. I'm going to say that again. For the people in the back, as well as the people in the front, you are the Christ. Yes, you are magical, you are powerful, you were born with a unique potentiality of God that is unique to you, unique to you. You are able to express it and embody it in a way that no one else has and in a way no one else can. The reason why that is true is because you exist with your beautiful self. You are that. So embody it and embrace it. And in through that Christ nature, it brings you all the good in your life. Even when good appears to come to you from outside of you. It comes to you from outside of you because your Christ nature puts you in a position to where someone wants to bless you. So it still comes from within. And through your Christ nature, you're victorious. Through your Christ nature, you can know abundance. Through your Christ nature, you can heal. Through your Christ nature, you can experience all the love, all the beauty, all the joy that you can conceive of. This is why gratitude works, because gratitude puts me in alignment with that Christ nature, and it allows all the blockages to remove from me so that I can experience all that the Christ nature has in me. You know, if I turn on the water faucet in my kitchen and I have my cup to collect the water, I'm going to receive all that that cup can hold. But I could just as easily take that cup and turn it upside down and watch the water hit the, bot hit the bottom of the cup and splatter all over the place, never getting inside the cup. When we embody gratitude, it has that same effect. It opens us up to turn that cup so that it can catch what is flowing into it. And as it catches what it flows into, what flows into it, 
You become full. You become bountiful. And this is why the word is gratefulness. Because embodying gratefulness produces a great fullness of life. You feel full. You feel whole. The sense of lack in your life dissipates. Because as I practice gratitude, what ends up happening is that I recognize how my life is bountiful and how my life is blessed. And blessed. And I don't put so much attention on what I believe that I lack. I'm always consciously focusing on what I have. And as I feel this gratitude, as I said earlier, gratitude is its own spiritual practice. And I am almost imploring you, almost to the point of begging you, if you don't already have a gratitude practice as a part of your spiritual practice and as a part of your well-being, please adopt it. Please practice it. A gratitude practice is any practice that causes you to pause and reflect on those things in your life that bless you, that are good, that are wonderful. As mentioned earlier, many people have a gratitude journal where every day they take the time to write down those things in their lives that are beautiful, that are wonderful their relationships, your family, the good interactions that you have, the wonderful resources that you have in your life. Write those things down. Me personally, I'm partial to meditation. Every evening for about 10 minutes, I take the time to meditate and reflect on all the good things that happened to me in the course of that day. And then I allow myself to feel gratitude for each and every one of those things. In other words, taking a pause, stopping all other activities, and sitting and reflecting on the good things in your life. This is thanks living, and doing it on a daily basis. And as you reflect on those things that you're grateful for, then the next step is to express that gratitude. And that's what thanksgiving is all about. It is a holiday where we take the time to stop and pause and give thanks to those things that are wonderful in our lives. So we're going to practice giving thanks and expressing gratitude right now. Anybody notice anything different around here? <laughs> At least we didn't set this up in September like many of the stores did. <laughs> but it's beautiful. We have the Christmas trees and, and everything that are all set up. And this happened because many wonderful people decided to come together to decorate the church for Christmas time, to get us ready for the Christmas season. And many of you who were here, who participated in that effort, are sitting in here now. So in a way of expressing gratitude, those of you who participated in decorating our wonderful church for Christmas, would you please stand? Now how about we show them some gratitude? Thank you all so very much. Thank you so very much. You did a wonderful job. But expressing gratitude magnifies the sense of gratitude. It magnifies it in the person who embodies the gratitude, and it, it magnifies gratitude on the receiving end, on the one receiving the expression of gratitude. So when we give thanks and we express our gratitude, it only magnifies the very beautiful and beneficial effects. This is what thanks living is all about. And in a world of seemingly craziness, where there is infighting and political backbiting and snipping and back and forth, when there is tremendous suffering on different places in the planet, 
We need a sense of gratitude in order to stay sane. Because gratitude keeps us connected to the good, and it keeps us connected to what is real in life. Beauty is real. Love is real. Life is real. Connection is real. Beautiful and flowering relationships are real. The crap you see on the news is not. Turn the TV off and turn yourself on and embody that gratitude so that we can see life in a healthy way. And when we see and when we see things that are confusing and we see things that reflect conflict, struggle and strife, gratitude will help us rem be reminded that these are the things that happen when enough people buy into the idea of separation. I'm going to stick with gratitude and reconnect with God and reconnect with love and reconnect with life and reconnect with beauty and reconnect with the good in my life and, and allow myself to be reminded that it is my good and it is my source of good that I should be giving my attention to. It is my good and the source of good that I should allow my thoughts to be dominated by. It is my good and my source of good that should govern how I interact in the world, that should govern how I think and how I express myself in the world. And it is my sense of good in being in connection with my source of good that should help me to realize that when I see you, I see me. Whatever I do to you, I do to me. However I treat you, I treat me. Because it's all oneness. It's all God. This is what gratitude does, and this is why when we embody gratitude and we allow ourselves to have a consciousness of great fullness, it blesses our lives. Gratitude. So have a happy Thanksgiving this Thursday. Some of you will be coming here, and you'll, you'll pig out here. And each and every person here is invited and bring a friend, bring a guest. So happy Thanksgiving, but moreover, happy Thanksgiving. Not a holiday, every day. As always, I hold you all in very sacred space. And into that sacred space, I speak a wonderful word of prayer. Light, life, and love to you all. I'm grateful for you. God bless you.